I don't want this to be a story just about prison. I want it to be something that's meaningful, meaningful to anybody. Welcome to Stuck in Vermont, brought to you by Seven Days and sponsored by Hotel Vermont and Vermont Tourism. My name is Ava Solberger. We are here in downtown Burlington at the Amy E. Tarrant Gallery at the Flynn Center for the Performing Arts. And this is an artist talk given by Jeremy Lee McKenzie. And his show is called Hidden Blueprints. As much as this collection of artwork is a collection from prison, it's not really a story about prison. It's a story about humans. It's a story about people and the complicated, sometimes conflict-filled situations that we find ourselves in, whether that's on the inside or the outside. I guess my story probably began when I was a teenager. Rather than having really good mentors, the mentors that I had were heroin traffickers. So I learned to identify with that world at a pretty young age and started making a lot of decisions and living a life that was really revolved around drugs and the drug trade. And ended up getting arrested at 16 um, for heroin dealing and becoming incarcerated at 17 for um, bank robbery and um, more heroin related charges. Over the next, 12 or 13 years would be in and out of the system and spend a total of like eight years um, in prison. I fell out of the hole in the wall and I can hear for the curtain call but I can't take it. Living straight lazy. I learned about wood scroll work when I was a teenager in a prison wood shop. Hidden Blueprints is a show that's composed of large pieces of wood scroll work that I cut from blueprints that I designed in the prison system. The collection was designed on, essentially on taped together pieces of paper and uh, folded up and stashed away. A lot of them hidden in my legal work until I could bring them home. Designing these pieces was something that was really freeing on the inside for me. It was a way for me to claim control of my own life and the creative capacities in my own life. A lot of these pieces were cut, unfortunately, in a windowless attic, which didn't feel very free at all. Well, there was a moment when I stopped and realized what was giving me freedom on the inside is costing me imprisonment in a windowless attic on the outside. Wood scroll work design is very similar to maze design. If you follow the scroll work, everything is connected. You might run into dead ends and you might circle back around in some way, but everything in a scene is essentially a big maze that's designed in the image of other things, which really is like, it's like life. I mean, life is just a giant maze designed in the image of other things. This particular piece is called Influence. I had been shipped down to the Lee Adjustment Center in Beattyville, Kentucky. While I was there, I found there was a, an interesting culture of fighting praying mantises. Myself and a couple of friends found a mantis and set that mantis to fighting. Most people kept their praying mantis in a cardboard box, but we decided to let our mantis live free in our cell. We didn't want to put our mantis in a box. Mikey was able to interact with us in a way that we didn't expect from an insect. You could gesture to Mikey and Mikey would come over to you. You could put your finger out and Mikey would put his arms up, or I should say her arms up, because in fact Mikey was actually a Michelle. <laughs> Mikey would put her arms up and you could scoop the mantis up and put it on your shoulder. And if another person said, hey Mikey, come here, Mikey would fly over and land on their shoulder. It was enough to make us realize, like, these aren't just stupid insects in boxes, we can't fight them against each other anymore. So we stopped fighting mantises. The conditions in the facility itself were starting to deteriorate. The living situation there was very bad and there was a lot of mistreatment happening. We ended up having a bit of an uprising there, had a riot that ended up burning part of the facility. During that, many of us didn't end up going back to our original cells. Other people were put in my cell and Mikey ended up getting killed because to him, Mikey was just an insect. This piece is a story of a captured prisoner who's taken off to the Coliseum and has to fight opponents, but then wins the hearts of the people and becomes free. And in the center of it is praying menace, is Mikey whispering the story to a kid. This piece is the story of Mikey. Here's this really funny thing that people on the outside tend to forget. They create this dividing line that there's people who are on the outside who are like good and living the right way, and that there's then people on the inside who weren't good and didn't live the right way. Every single person on the inside came from out here. They came from out here, it's not like two different worlds. Part of my storytelling is definitely the desire to shift people's perspectives. Uh, to shift people's perspectives of people who are on the inside, but also shift people's perspectives who are on the inside. I think it's really important for people to understand how they may have the ability to empower themselves in ways that they might not be seeing.
Stories in general have a really big meaning to me. I'd say they've had a, a really big meaning for a lot of my life, but where they became really meaningful for me was uh, during my time working as a, a prison movie projectionist. Like A good story just took people out of whatever it was that they were going through. And often people would take messages away from the stories that they saw. And I saw that as something that was really important, not just for people who are on the inside, not just for prisoners, but for people all over the world, people anywhere. I'm currently a junior at Champlain College, creative media major with a focus in digital filmmaking and two minors in film scoring and screenwriting. The point when I stopped identifying with previous mentors like drug dealers and started identifying with mentors who I had never met, like Christopher Nolan or different filmmakers, was when I started seeing reflections of my own life in the characters that I saw in movies. I saw filmmakers who understood things like irony and duality and that things aren't always black and white. That was how my own life read. When you're starting at the bottom, sometimes you have to aim for the top. Don't just dream, but dream big. Just the other day I was going through old stuff and there's a note to myself that says, you absolutely will get to film school. You will be a filmmaker. So now that I'm here at the very beginning of that, I would say it feels pretty damn good. It's been a long, long time coming. You can see Hidden Blueprints through November 28th here at the Amy E. Tarrant Gallery, and we will get stuck in Vermont with you again real soon. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and sign up for our newsletter. Bye. What do you have against snowmen? <laughs> <laughs> what did a snowman ever do to you? <laughs> I love snowmen. <laughs> I feel like prisons should be run by philosophers instead of prison guards. <laughs> uh oh. Now what are we doing? You're gonna. <laughs> and you're gonna talk to me. Okay. Retake. <laughs>